May God bless you. I welcome you to this teaching. My name is Nchanjin Kenneth. Listen to this. Vision is powerful. Vision is powerful. If you must effect changes on earth and even in your life, if you must dominate, if you must rule as God intended for you. Psalms 8 verse 5 to 6. Genesis 1 26 right up to 28. Psalms 115 verse 16. God created you to rule over the earth. God has a purpose for your creation. Isaiah 46 verse 9 forward. You were created to accomplish a unique task. There are problems on earth waiting for your answers. You were born to be distinguished. You were born to do something unique. You are no mistake. Current statistics, may maybe not very much reliable, just predictions. We are over 8 billion people on earth right now. All of them, including the children that will be born in the next two minutes and the one and the roughly, let's just say 500,000 or 5,000 plus that will be conceived in the next one minute. As you're listening to this teaching right now, they all have an assignment. God builds things on purpose. Our God is a God of purpose, a God of plan, a God of design, an objective God. You are no mistake. Even if you are studying the wrong thing right now in the university or you are doing the wrong thing right now, you're not yet sure if this is what you were created to do. Trust me, if you listen to this, it will change you. You were born to become something very important. There is a uniqueness deposited within you, Psalms 139, verse 12 right down to 17, unique about you. There are certain things only you alone can do in the whole world. This is partly, I believe, why you have a unique thumbprint. Not even identical twins have the same thumbprint or fingerprint. Think about it. That means you are so unique and special, exceptionally created by you. If there was no need for you on earth, God would not have permitted you are being born. I'm telling you the truth. See, you are no mistake. You have a vision. You have a purpose. There's a calling. There's an assignment for you. And I'm speaking to you right now. Make sure that you don't die without doing this. And these things keep troubling you. You know it in your heart. And through the word of God, I will help you rediscover this. As God helps me also to teach. Now, Jeremiah 1 verse 11 says, Jeremiah 1 verse 11, read this. I'm using the King James Version. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me saying, Do you know right now you are receiving a rhema, an impartation, the living word penetrating into your members that will change perspectives about you totally? i like for you to get that. The word came unto me saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? And I said, I see the rod of an almond tree. Wait a minute. See, 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 see. Keep looking at that word. Verse 12 said, Then the Lord said unto me, Thou hast seen what? Do you know God is always talking to you? Think about that. For I will hasten my word to perform it. Hallelujah. You've seen it very well, Jeremiah. I will hasten my word to perform what you have seen. You've seen it very well. I will hasten my word to perform what you have seen. Can I say this then? That means God is only permitted to do what you have seen. Vision, therefore, is powerful. Vision is not sight. Sight deals with what you are seeing physically. Vision shows you what could be, what could become, what you can be, what will take place, what will be. Vision is necessary if men must make meaningful impact. Vision is actually a glimpse of your future. It shows you your purpose impacts. Purpose means original reason. Why were you created? Many are the plans in a man's heart, but it is only the purpose of God for him that will prevail. You were created on purpose. There is an assignment for you on earth right now. And it will take vision for you to see that assignment. And also to pursue it, it takes courage, it takes a plan. And I'm going to show you the power of vision in making you successful. Everyone on earth is always seeing something. When you are asleep, when you are walking, when you are studying, when you are listening to a teaching right now, you can be seeing yours. When you are in class, whatever you are called to do, that vision always speaks. It talks to you. Jeremiah has a calling. He must deliver a nation. He is prophetic. So shall I put the word deliver? He must give the word of the Lord to the people. He's a prophet called at a unique time. When the Israelites are going through a lot of diverse things, he didn't know. So it would take God to disturb the actions of Jeremiah so that Jeremiah can align himself with what God intended for him to be. Can I say this to you? 
some of these encounters you've been having, the dreams and the disturbing visions you've been having about you, stop running away from it. Philippians, uh, now Ephesians 3.20, My God, your God, is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you can ever ask, think or imagine by the power is at work in you. Think about it. Above all you can ever ask, you can ever think or imagine. So imagination is powerful because imagination is an adventure into the future. You have the ability to travel and see what you're supposed to be before you come back. Everyone is always seeing a vision. Listen to this, friend. Your only challenge is believing what you're seeing. Vision is powerful. Vision, when you see it and desire it, it disciplines you. Vision is so important to the extent that it delivers you from the waste of resources. There is no proper planning of your life without a vision. You need it. And in part two of this video, I'm going to show you the power of planning for good success. And it will be linked to this vision. Vision is necessary. You and me need to start seeing some things about us. Vision simply means what is going to become. What will happen? What will manifest? What could happen? What could manifest? Can I say this further to you? God will never allow you to see all of your vision. And between what you are seeing of yourself becoming and the current reality right now, that gap, I put it that way, is what we call a plan. What must be done in order to get to the vision? Your safest place to be is in pursuing the vision God showed you. The greatest place you should be is in pursuing the vision God showed you. If you want to be famous, influential, popular, victorious, if you want to dominate, if you want to create impact on earth right now, pursue the vision God is showing you. If you've not yet had one, it's time to pray, Lord, unveil to me what I'm supposed to be. What must I do about my marriage? What must I do about these academics? What must I do about my children? What must I do about a job? What must I do about setting up a new company? What must I do about the souls that are perishing? What should I do in my ministry? I want something better. He will show you. Praise God. This is so important for us to understand. And I wrote a few things right here so that we reflect on quickly in this short video. Can I say this? Vision is unique for everyone. The other interesting thing about vision is this. When it starts, trust me, it's unbelievable. And I'm going to, the key thing I really want here for you to be convinced about is to know if my vision is from God. The other thing too is that no vision, trust me, there will be no plan and there will be a wasting of your time. Where the vision is absent, the people perish. In other words, they waste, they give attention to things that are unnecessary. You are not supposed to be visionless. You are supposed to have a dream. Have a vision. See the future. See yourself becoming something. One thing I love about children is that when you ask them anything about what they are going to become, trust me, child of God, they will call things that are unimaginable. Do not neglect those things. I believe, and I want you to understand this deeply, the greatest threat to the calling, the vision, which actually indicates our purpose, we have is our parents, the educational system, and the opinions of others. You see yourself becoming a medical doctor. And because you are struggling, you talk about it with your parents. They tell you this cannot be in this lifetime. See, they killed it. They poisoned it. And sometimes you are tempted to believe it. I wonder what you would have been by now. You were a ministry, sir. Man of God, God bless your soul. What would your ministry have become by now? If only you choose to pursue what God showed you rather than listening to the opinions of men. You see, if God shows it, he will hasten to perform his word. If God shows it, he will make resources available. Your challenge is in being courageous, like Joshua being charged in Joshua 1. To be courageous, to be brave, to be on good chairs. It's, it, 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 when you have seen your future, you don't need faith again. Whoa. Hmm. If you've seen what is supposed to happen, you don't need faith again. That's a strong statement. All you need is courage. Why? Faith has to do with the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of unseen realities. If you've already seen it, you don't need it. You just need that courage, bravery to deal with all the opposition and get there. No vision comes easy. It will take hard work. It will take planning. It will take determination. It will take commitment. It will take discipline, self-imposed discipline to get to the vision. And you and me, we need to understand this so that we do not make mistakes. And I'm speaking to you right now. You have to get there. Start the work. 
Let's go to Habakkuk. Hallelujah. Habakkuk chapter 2. I will stand upon my watch and I set me upon the tower and I will watch to see what he will say unto me. I will watch to see what God will say unto me. I will watch to see. I will watch to see. I will watch to see. I will watch to see what God will say unto me. And what I shall answer when I'm reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision. Hey, hey, principle number one, you get the vision from God documented. Trust me, child of God, I have books right here about um, the, all of my diaries. They are filled with things. If you open and see them, you'll be shocked. Whether it's about this boy talking to you, that's going to do it. If you can't write it, you didn't believe it. God never shot you. As we speak, there are books written or depending editings by me. Because he showed me at a very early stage and I wrote them down and I kept thinking about it. Any vision you don't write, you can't remember, you won't review it, you are not committed to it. Think about it. Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that read edit. Um, I've, I've done a teaching. Check on my Facebook wall and just type, you know, what to do when God gives me a vision, how to receive godly visions and all of that. When you type that, add my name to it. The message will come and study it. Because there are deep things in this Habakkuk too. I won't talk about it all through. This is Mary. Check this out. Mary has been visited by an angel. He's told, she's told things that are unimaginable. She is not doubting. She believes it will come to pass. So she asks, how is this going to be? This is what God will do. God will expose Mary to Elizabeth, the elder cousin. Mary has to stay with Elizabeth for three months and get acquainted with the situation, early pregnancy symptoms and all of that for mentoring. By now, Elizabeth is already six months pregnant. She had one, gone through the process and she already knows the feeling. What's the principle? If you have a vision about what is to come and you are committed to it, you dare to believe it, God is going to supernaturally connect you with people. Your challenge right now is in believing the vision. I'm telling you, do it. You'll be surprised. I know what I'm talking about. It says, write it plain so that they that see it may run. They that read it may run. The word run doesn't mean run away from it. No, it means apply to it, subscribe to it, become part of it. Jesus. It means people are always waiting for someone to start something. This is why when I lay hands on anything God showed me, I have known that it will prosper. This is why our church ministry and ministries we have under the Kingdom of God, Dominion Ministries, like the Healing Academy, the Kingdom School of Marriage, and uh, the Kingdom School of Business Leadership and Dominion, and all of that, they will all flourish abundantly when the vision is written down and pursued. Praise God. It says, for the vision is yet for an appointed time. Hallelujah. But at the end, it shall speak and not lie. Hallelujah. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Listen to these words and be encouraged, child of God. When the vision begins, it is never popular. It is not even celebrated. It's not even regarded. I used to think when God shows me something, as I started, or people would just love it and get used to it. No way. One of the greatest challenges I've had to be when I was in a religious setup, I had a lot of massive followership. People enjoyed me because they would come, you pray, they get healed, had their interests and needs being met. Trust me. When I declared totally, and while doing that, I had been absorbed into kingdom teachings. But you can't operate that in a religious setting. When I declared the intention to begin pursuing the kingdom, trust me, I lost people. And I'm shocked. I said, God, is this what you taught me? You showed me this. Well, how comes people are not interested in it? He told me the vision does not speak at the beginning, but at the end it will. Stop being worried. Stop looking for faults with what you are pursuing right now. Stop it. There's no sin with you. There's nothing wrong you're doing. The vision is gaining grounds. Be patient. Keep reviewing it. Keep seeing what did God show me? What do I want to be? What does I want? What 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 do I want to become? What do I want to pursue? Uh, what does what God want me to do? Keep keep dreaming these things. It's necessary. This only this does not only have to do with church. Trust me, please. It's about even your work, your company. What is the next phase? What is the next phase? What do I intend to achieve? When do I get my master's, postgraduate degrees, doctorate and all of that? When do I get married? All these things must be in place. If there is no vision, you will perish. You will be concentrated on doing wrong things and concentrated on doing things that are good but not necessarily right. When God gives you a vision, dare to pursue it. There is no impact with that vision. 
quickly what are the things that will threaten a man's vision number one men's opinions number two failure to write it down it is written here document it make it plain make it clear Number three, lack of planning. Men's opinion, let me quickly say that if you want to hear everything everyone will say, trust me, they are going to speak what they are thinking. Oftentimes, many will talk you into failure, especially when what they tried, when you, what you are doing, they tried and they failed. And they think that because they failed, you should. Don't do that. That's wisdom for you. Number two, um, I talked about documenting it. You have to write it down. Make it plain. Number three, because when you write it down, you look at it and you can make a plan. There is no fulfillment of vision without a plan. So when you lack a plan, visions cannot be fulfilled. Next thing, when you don't have self-imposed discipline, even the vision God showed you can be aborted. You need to discipline yourself. And in one of the videos, you will keep checking on this wall, you get it. It's about self-imposed discipline. Understanding the precepts of God and why you have to follow. You, you must put these things down. The next thing is, failure to get mentors when you don't get a mentor who believes in what you are if you search god will show you trust me he never allows you to see a vision with that first of all preparing mentors for you all right and if you don't get one chances are it may fail the other thing is laziness you are just lazy you don't want to pursue it you know it you can't do it the gifts and you won't refine you see yourself singing you do nothing about it you won't sing friend etc etc there are many things that threaten vision I won't talk about all of that right now for the sake of time. And I need you to understand this. Vision is powerful. Vision simply means what is yet to become. Vision is actually your purpose shown to you in parts. How do I receive a vision? First of all, you don't need to be sleeping before you dream to get a vision. You can have a vision in a dream. Joy 2.28, I will pour my spirit upon all flesh. That was already done. What will happen? Old men will dream dreams and young men will see visions. Have you ever wondered why God permits young men to see visions? And allows the old man to dream dreams because a dream is not necessarily a vision. A dream may never be fulfilled in your lifetime. A vision is fulfillable. Shall I use that word? God permits the young men, I believe, to see visions because they have strength enough to pursue it to fulfillment. Sila, think about it. Think about it. Reflect on it. And so, God can give you a vision while you are asleep. He can give you a vision when you are listening to a message right now. He can give you a vision when you are traveling, when you are listening to discussions from people. He can give you a vision even while you are awake, while you are reading a book, while you are in class, attending to lectures, while you are in the market, wherever you may be. The key thing is being sensitive, just like Habakkuk, just like Jeremiah and many others. Stay on course. Stay spirit-filled. Stay on the word of the kingdom. Stay connected to God. When a vision comes, write it down. Dare to pursue it. Begin to ask questions too because sometimes those glimpses will appear when you begin to be disturbed with what you must do next. God will show you a vision about your job, marriage, any situation you want to improve. If you don't yet have a vision, God is not committed to blessing anything you do. Get one and stick to it and pursue it. Praise God for you. My name is Nchanji. Okay, Kenneth, I pray this blesses you. Goodbye. God bless you.